day, well above freezing, down by the boat launch. Good day to make some progress on the generator cage. These little rubber grommets are used to push through holes in sheet metal. So when you put a wire through the hole, the edge of the sheet metal doesn't cause damage to the wire. They're surprisingly difficult to find, but I ordered a box of different sizes and I've inserted one here for where I'm putting the backup light. Rubbery residue from the kill mat inside has coated the bit. I need some more sheet metal screws to hold the reflector in place. Wherever will I find some? I'm going to attach the ground lead of the backup light to one of the bolts back here. And I have to dress the other cable to go around the perimeter of the cage. I cut to size and painted these three pieces of 1x2 to use as guides for the wheels of the generator to make sure it doesn't slide around inside the cage. This is a 30 amp plug, which is going to be the main source of electricity from the generator going into the breaker box. I've also run a secondary 20 amp one that doesn't add to the total capacity of the generator, but I could think of situations where, for example, I've got this plugged into an extension cord going into shore power, but this could still be plugged into the generator for additional power, say for an air conditioner. I've got the ceiling installed now. Here's the view from the inside. There are controls and a display on the generator, and I thought it would make it easier to read them at night. If I added this light, which I'm going to try to screw onto the ceiling. With some effort, I wrestled it into place. Somehow it's nap time. One of the things I learned was that the male plug that I bought when I asked for one for 20 amps is not the right one. So I'll have to do a little more shopping. But this corner got damaged when I bolted the top down. But the exhaust lines up pretty well. Till now it has been an article of faith that this drawbridge design will allow me to pull the generator out for servicing and for fueling. I haven't tried it yet. Let's have a go. Well, it seems to work. The next test will be to start up the generator and see how it sounds with all this soundproofing. It's difficult to tell over video but it is significantly quieter. The lights on this tester suggest that I've got a problem with open ground. Checking for continuity. There is continuity of the ground wire. So I wonder if the issue of an open ground is something that you just get with generators. If any of you knows the answer, feel free to let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, we do have power. Oh, cool.
I need to mount on the back of the generator housing working lights that are the equivalent of the ones that the housing is blocking from view. I've installed a backup light and a reflector, and I've just received from Amazon an equivalent to the running light. The clear lens on the bottom is for illuminating the license plate. If we open the light up, we see that it has an incandescent bulb inside. That's the kind of bulb common before LEDs were invented. I've bought a replacement LED bulb because it will last longer and should draw less current. 90% or more of the electricity used by incandescent bulbs is wasted as heat. Well, there's a test fit of the running light. Still have to bolt it down and wire it in. I've snaked an additional pair of wires through the wall of the bus, through the conduit, down through the hose, and around. They're soldered and ready for the heat gun to shrink the shrink wrap. Despite the Kilmat sound insulation, during a test run of the generator, I still felt a fair bit of vibration being conducted, I guess, through this frame and into the body of the bus. So I've added some rubber pads that are designed to dampen vibrations. The wheels will sit on those, and we'll see if that makes a difference. To better deter theft, I just upgraded to a much more heavy-duty padlock. And to keep it from rattling around, I just pulled an old sock over it. I'm finishing the generator installation, and I read somewhere that obliging the exhaust to go around a corner can significantly reduce the sound of a generator. This will serve another function in that I can attach a metallic dryer hose to it to conduct the exhaust further away from the bus. I'm going to uh, try to install it today and see what kind of difference it makes. The installation has to be sturdy but removable. So I'm going to be installing a couple threaded riv nuts using the riv nut tool and then use these eye hooks to hold the piece in place. Well, here it is, but it's hard to gauge the effect with winds up to 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour possibly in this area today. But I think it makes a bit of a difference. Inside, with the windows closed, the sound of the generator is certainly tolerable. I've hooked up all the lights that are bolted to the rear of the generator housing, and for a final touch, I've taken a piece of sheet metal that I got off the ceiling and cut it to size, and I've used it to cover up the uh, big holes that I had to make to do the wiring. I've already purchased 600 watts of solar panels to install on the roof, and I plan to get a battery bank of lithium ion batteries. So the generator was never meant to be a primary source of power, just one available when necessary to top up the batteries or when my usage exceeds what the batteries will put out. So this thick wire that carries up to 30 amps at 110 volts currently terminates in this junction box and eventually an equally thick wire will come out of the junction box and go to a switch which will allow me to switch between the battery bank and the generator as the means of powering the bus. The output of that switch is going to go into a circuit breaker box that will let me distribute 110 volts around the bus.